been <sighs> some talk that well, let's start off with Ali Gold, as he says Barcelona Usman Dembele is one of the number of players that have been offered to Tottenham in the recent days. Shea Lugassi says Moussa Sissoko, this is not the Moussa Sissoko that used to play for us, by the way. Moussa Sissoko, who is Dembele's agent, offered the player to Tottenham. Sources at Spurs say they doubt there will be a deal, but they add that the club does not rule out um, and they are thinking about the option, but time is running out. And Sammy Mockbell says that Tottenham have been offered Dembele, who can leave the new Camp this month. Sources have rated a move to Tottenham as doubtful, given the expenses attached. But as it stands, it's not being completely ruled out. Barca want uh, 16 million in a transfer fee for the forward, but it's the player with eight. He wants 8 million a season in terms of salary, and that would be the likely sticking point. Mm. Yeah, I mean, this is one for me. Um, with um, Kulusevski coming in, if we if we do say keep Bergwijn, I think right now it does seem a bit unnecessary um, to be spending, splashing out big, big money on a player who has a really bad injury record over the past few years and um, has definitely got attitude problems in terms of how he's been um, uh, conducting himself for Barcelona. You've got to say that. So whether I would risk it, I mean, I'm, look, if he does come in through the door, I'm not going to say no to a, such a quality player. I just feel like, again, we're going to be spending fairly big money. He's, I thought, you know, seeing as the sticking point at Barca is his wages, isn't it? He wants bigger wages, and he's probably on a lot. So whether we're going to give him to that... Yeah, he um, a million a year, apparently. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, do I see Tottenham giving him that? Probably not. Um, and I think right now, a winger, we've got Bergwijn, Lucas, we've got Kulusevski and Son... I mean, we're pretty good there right now. I'm, I'm, I'm not, obviously, I'm not going to say no to improving and getting more options. And maybe if, if, if Bergwijn's going to be moved move more centrally than whatever. But um, I just feel like we've got Kudusevsky now. Let, let's try our hardest to get, if we're going to push the bow out a bit, get a right wing back. The only way this happens is if Bergwijn moves on, in my opinion. Mm. And there is talk of that, which we'll get into um, a bit later in the stream. But we're saying one in, one out. Hill's gone, Kudusevsky's come in. If Bergwijn goes, I can see us making an offer for, for Dembele, to be honest. But that's the only; uh, those are the only conditions, really, that I see it happening in. Yeah, potentially. Maybe if Bergwijn leaves. Um, but I guess uh, that, uh, in the moment, there is talk, but it does still seem unlikely that's going to happen yeah, in the moment. it does. Well, Trump, I am pretty worried about it. And what I was, what, what I was worried about is going to sell Hill and Bergwijn just for Kulusevski. Yeah, that wouldn't be on. Would but you? I don't think, I, even if we sell Bergwijn, we're actually going to get Dembele. I don't know. I still, I reckon we might go for someone else. I don't know if we'll go for him specifically. I had, to, I'm, I mean, I'm still skeptical of this deal. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, well, I'm, there's too many, diff, there's too many difficult things and be a against lot of, it. And there might be a lot of clubs in for him uh, in the last 24 hours of the window. I mean, he's mm. a player that should attract quite a bit of interest with the talent he has. Mm -hmm. um, I, for one, if we were to sell Bergvine, I'd be, I'll be well up for getting him in. I think the talent he has, I mean, you kind of can't really turn it down. Um, if at such a good price at 16 million if you're going to sell Bergwijn at something like 20 25 million and you're going to bring Dembele in for cheaper I yeah it makes no sense it makes sense from, from that point of view um I'm just worried about um him causing friction in the dressing room if he can't get on at Barca right now if he's apparently a part of the problem is he see um he thinks he's bigger than the club or something like that and he thinks he's more important than he is and he's asking for the highest wages in the, in the squad and all these things and do we want that kind of attitude? Just Tottenham, it'll humble you a little bit. <laughs> do we want that kind of attitude in the dressing room? I don't know. I, I don't know. But, but to be fair, you know, with Son, he's going to be 30 in the summer and if we did get Dembele and he'll definitely be a very much uh, like a long-term replacement for him. Mm. Yeah. But look, that's the situation at the moment. It's, it's very unlikely that we do make a move for him but I guess... Uh, there is over 24 hours to go left of the window, so we'll see how it plays out. But that's the Usman Dembele situation. Let's talk about Tangi Undombele, um, as there has been some sort of movement on him. Julian Maynard saying Tangi Undombele is heading to Lyon. Final details are under negotiation. It is now the most serious option uh, for the current Tottenham midfielder. And RMC Sport follow on from that saying, unless the situation turns around, Ndombele will join Olympic Lyonnais on loan with an option to buy. And also um, what's come mm. out of that is that Giovanni Lo Celso, who actually they went for before Tangi Ndombele, has rejected uh, Lyon. Uh, we brought you the news yesterday uh, that we brought you the news yesterday that Lo Celso had an offer from uh, Lyon. Uh, Tottenham accepted it. 
but they've rejected it. So they have gone for Undombele now, and it looks as though Undombele is heading back to Lyon. Hmm. It would be quite something if Lyon had both Undombele and, and Lucelso and started smashing out. That would be interesting. But um, in terms of Undombele, um, yeah, so it looks like a loan with an option to buy, which is. Um, do, I wonder how much that option to buy is because. Um, you do wonder because obviously how deals are structured in this day and age with um, installments and things like that maybe it could be a case where we give them an option of far less and then we also um, maybe they we, they knock off some of the money we owe them or something like that maybe something could be done there um, in terms of the money that we owe them for Ndombele and they get them for very cheap It'd in that sense to see how much we do owe them and what the, that all looks like look yeah because it all look like I would assume because there was a lot of rumours that it was 45 million plus add-ons that took it to 65, right? So I doubt he's made a lot of the a lot of the add-ons. Probably hasn't made them. So maybe there's oh, let's estimate say 15 between 15 and 20 million we could owe them. Probably some of the add-ons were Champions League related as well. Yeah, and appearance been. even appearances. He yeah. hasn't even made so many appearances, has he? Um, you know, maybe maybe it's like 100 appearance after 100 appearances this gets activated. Has he even made 100 appearances for us? Uh, so I don't even know. So um, I th I th let's if we could estimate, we let's say well, there's 15 million outstanding we owe them. We could we could uh, if we like knock off the price or something. And all of a sudden, that's a bit of money could be saved there in a way. Um, anyway, in terms of Ndombele, going back to Leon, it's a club he knows, obviously. He, we, that's where we signed him from, is where he was happiest. Um, they know how to use him. He's going to be under less pressure there as well. Um, and hopefully he can get that happiness back, which he's definitely lost at Tottenham. So f good luck to him. Um, it's obviously kind of a backward step considering... You know, he moved on from Leon three years ago, hoping to make that step up. Hasn't quite happened. So maybe it's going to be a case of him again proving himself. But um, it could, maybe it could be a good move for him. And it's also a very good replacement for Bruno Guimaraes for them as well, I would say. Um, yeah, I mean, look, it's a, it's a player with amazing talent uh, going back to, uh, back to where we signed him from. Look, I think it's... In terms of Leon, I think it's a good move for them because they're getting rid of a top player and they're bringing in another top player that's already worked there in the past. So mm. um, I think it's a good move for Leon. In terms of Ndombele, um, and in terms of moving his career forward, it is a bit of a step backwards. But sometimes when things don't work out, you need to take a bit of a step backwards to move forward again. So I think it's going to be a good, a good move for all parties, to be honest. And I, I back him uh, to do well back at Leon. I really do. So that's mm. uh, Ndombele, that's Lo Celso. Uh, let's talk about Brian Hill now, as Romano has confirmed that Valencia are closing in on Brian Hill loan deal with Tottenham, just waiting for the final green light from Spurs to complete paperwork and sign as soon as possible. And I believe there was um, an update in the last few seconds as well. Yeah, from Romano. Um, where's that one? Oh, yeah, and he says, Brian Hill set to join Valencia from Tottenham. Deal, done deal and confirmed. Loan move to be signed in the next hours after Spurs completed Kulusevsky deal. Um, and yeah, and he says that uh, Tottenham are in advance talk to Leon for Tanguy and Dombele and Delhi to AC Milan rumours are wide off the mark. That's a shame if that's the latter part. But in terms of Hill, um, Paul O'Keefe yesterday saying it's an 18-month loan deal. Oh, really? uh, for Hill as opposed to a six month that's what he's claiming um, sorry he said six months with an option of a further year right. so it could very likely turn into an 18 month deal and now with the um, con now with the rumours about um, Kulusevsky from Damasio saying that's an 18 month loan deal that kind of makes sense mm -hmm. in a way we're getting that. that's how, how things are working out in terms of Brian Hill he needs the game time he needs to really start developing his game from the starting point uh, for me so I think a loan deal is going to do well 18 month loan deal um, is a bit disappointing from the fact that we sign him for big money and we're getting in, we're getting rid of him on an 18 month loan deal only after six months um and whether that leads to i don't did they say an option to buy no doesn't it didn't say anything yeah um doesn't say anything about option to buy so maybe we're still believing he can be a player for us um in 18 months time uh to come to the first team i just don't think he's ready for the premier league right now um, which is which which has been a big bit of a disappointment but i still think he's got a lot of quality if he can build himself up the only thing is he's going back to la liga um, where he, we know how he, he's a pretty decent La Liga player. He's, I wouldn't say he's proven in La Liga, but he's proven he can perform and, and be and be um, influential uh, in that in that at that um, kind of level in the league as well. There, yeah. So he did well there. 
in terms of the problem with Tottenham is it's not necessarily that he's not showing the quality it's just that he can't really seem to get involved he seems to be very much anonymous he can't really seem to get on the ball and shield players and get past players he seems to be just physically not able to um, at this point in the Premier League and that's always been um, the biggest uh, problem for him so I do think it will help his development going to Valencia for 18 months and hopefully he comes back a better player but um uh, I guess we'll have to wait and see how if, if if he does if he if is, it, is this the last we're seeing of Hill at Tottenham, or will he feel come back? Be, you know, I've got a feeling it could be. I mean, him going to Valencia on loan. I mean, I don't think it's gonna. I mean, I just much prefer him to go to like an English club, get used to the English league. This one. He needs to bulk up a bit. Can you see him doing that in the Spanish league? Not really. I mean, if I think was... naturally, I think he's still fairly young. So at 20, I know he's 20, but I think naturally, if he, let's say he goes to Valencia, I don't know what their forward line options are off the top of my head, but let's say he does start regularly on a regular basis. I think naturally, physically, he will start to improve um, after 18 months, especially at that age, at 20, go to going into 21, 22. He'll definitely develop quite a bit physically. He, I don't think, he'll, obviously, he's a bit, he's like a short guy, so he's not going to be like that tall, um, strong like Kulusevski, but he can definitely develop physically um, within his a own right. build to like Luka Modric. Uh, yeah, or like Messi, something like something that kind like of build. That, but like, I just can't, I just can't see him. Um, if it's, if it is an 18 month loan deal, I just can't see it working with us, to be honest. I think that, it's a bit telling that is an 18 month loan deal. And I think that if he was planning to come, or if we were planning for him to come back, I think it would have been a bit of a shorter deal. 18 months doesn't really sit right with me. I would like to uh, feel to be a, a figure at Spurs. I mean, but no I, option I to buy him. Yeah. Huh? It depends to see if there's yeah, an option to buy. We don't know. If, um, if there is an option to buy, considering we spent how much we spent on him, 30, nearly 30 million or whatever, or uh, 22 million plus Lamella. You know, how much of a hit do we take up for him for after six months? Surely not that much of a hit, unless we really believe that he's not, he's never going to be a good player for us. I don't know. It remains to be seen. Uh, but him going on an How much would month, you think? How much do you think an option to buy would be? 30 million? 25 million? Probably about 20 to 25 million. Just so that, but that would indicate that we think that it's never going to work out. Yeah, that's exactly what it would indicate. Well, that's a bit. That's a bit of a sudden. That's a bit of a decision. I would say we've reached too quickly. I would say. Yeah, I'd agree with months. that. And I, 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 gen, I think that if we were planning for him to come back, we would have maybe maybe just offers didn't come in. But I thought we would have tried our best to get him um, to an English club, even if it was in the Championship, just to get him used to English football, week in week out, playing week in week out. We've seen how it's worked for other players in the past. So I thought maybe if, if we were planning to use him, planning to have him in the future, that's what we would have done. And him going to Spain doesn't really um, work like that. I still think if he plays regularly for Valencia for 18 months, he can definitely come back a better player. And I still think we can use him. Uh, uh, like, you know, we saw him play. If, if players right now are smashing it out in La Liga at a decent age, it doesn't matter um, that he's playing in La Liga. So you can still consider him. Like, we, it doesn't mean... Just because Hill is um, going off to La Liga doesn't mean he can't develop into a player who can play in the Premier League for me. Agreed, but there's just more question marks there, just still um, not getting used to the English football, going out to Spain where it's a much less physical uh, league than it is in England. So I just think that's that's what his game is lacking the most, is that figures, physical side. So I thought being in English football would just help him get to grips with that quicker. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how he does with Valencia. Because you've got to remember, at, um, where was Ibar, as much as he did well because in the circumstances in, in the sense that he was at a low team um, we, we still kind of only signed him on potential rather than what he's actually shown because as much as he did well there for, uh, like he still only did well for the circumstance he didn't actually proper smash it out like you know 15 assists or something he got like four or five assists didn't he and like three goals which four is goals yeah four goals and three and uh four assists or something like that Don't have the assists, yeah. um so from that perspective he did well seeing his yeah, eyeball were a bad team yeah they were literally in the relegation zone yeah they were like one of the worst teams in la liga that season yeah but he's, he hasn't but he's yet to show that he can co go into a good team or or um or a team higher up in la liga start regularly and provide regular goals and assists he hasn't shown that yet mm -hmm. so if he can go to valencia and do that 
that just, that for me is enough. If he goes to Valencia and regularly gets you know five to ten goals and 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 and, and five to ten assists um, over a season at that age, that goes that to me would show to me he could re- maybe come back to Tottenham a better player, more ready to contribute than he is now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's that's completely spot on. But also, if he goes there and does that and still um, hasn't like built into his body yet physically, he's going to come back here and, and and need another loan in England to, to get him to, to grips with the English football and to get his body up to scratch with it. So Potentially. I, I would have liked to him to go there now. I think that would have been best for all parties if he was going to plan to stay here or if we plan to yeah, keep well- him here. Maybe Valencia is the best option of what's available to, yeah, to go you, to. Well, you'd probably think so if that's where he's going. So, mm. um, so that's that. Brian Hill looks like he is going to Valencia. The last bit of news we have for you is Steven Bergvine. As Fabrizio Romano said, Steven Bergvine's deal between Spurs and Ajax is not off. Negotiations are still open and Tottenham still asking for 25 million euros. Would you make that? Yeah, I'm well? kind of worried that we're going to sell him because um, I, I think if you... Um, Take Berg, you sign Kulusevski and take Bergvine out. Um, as much as you could argue you're improving the quality, I think in the short term, it, does it help us that much? Probably not in terms of adding depth, especially if you take Hill and Bergvine out, which, which uh, obviously Hill looks on his way out now. So um, that would be a bit annoying if we were to get rid of Bergvine and Hill and only bring in Kulusevski. Um, that's what I'm worried about because... But Kulusevski is costing X amount of money, and that kind of fits with how much money we're going to get for Bergvine. So it kind of, from a le- from a logical, knowing Levy point of view, it makes sense we'll sell Bergvine because we're not getting much money for Hill, are we? It's only a loan deal, so it makes sense from a financial point of view. And if he wants to balance the books, Bergvine out, Kulusevski in, that kind of makes sense from that from a financial point of view. Um, but from a squad point of view. We need Bergvine to have to continue to have that depth because we're not adding. We're not um, w- the reason why we're bringing Kuliseski is we're lacking numbers in attacking areas. Yeah. If we're just replacing him with Bergvine, uh, if we're, uh, sorry, if we're just replacing Bergvine with Kuliseski, we're not adding depth. We're just replacing one for another. And you could argue you're adding quality. We could also argue that Kuliseski might not be ready right now to co- contribute that that much. So I wouldn't want to do that right that now. Makes sense to me at all to get rid of Hill and Bergvine and only bring in Kulusevski. It doesn't make sense. We're, we're short as it is. Uh, if we're bring, taking out Hill and bringing in Kulusevski, that's a player that hasn't been playing much to, uh, to bring in a player that can play uh, quite a bit, you would imagine. If you take out Bergvine, he's a player that, for, that um, Conte has already said he's a player that, that he can rely on. He's, a, he's also said he's a player that can uh, play second fiddle to Harry Kane uh, to give him a, a bit of rest here and there. So I think if we're getting rid of Bergvine, I got to believe that we're going to bring in someone else, whether it be Usman Dembele or, or someone else. But if we are going to get rid of Bergvine, we have to bring in another attacking option. We have to. Yeah, I'm just worried we're not. I'm worried we'll get rid of Bergvine. We'll justify it with, oh, uh, we had to bring in Kulisevsky and we had to balance the books and that's why we're getting rid of Bergvine. Um, and that's what I'm scared about. Um, and I hope uh, that's not the case because the squad looks a lot stronger with both of them rather than just one of them. Mm, exactly. And that's what I want. And especially with Bergvine off, off the back of a good performance against Leicester. And he really seems to get to grips with against Chelsea as well. I think he is starting to maybe get more ready to um, make an impact in this first team and provide another option for us. Especially actually since Conte's come in, his form's been pretty decent in general anyway. So I want to, I want to keep him. I also think if he has another good six months and we are, if we do generally want to send him or he does really want to leave, his value will be a lot higher in six months' time if he continues the form he's doing, even if it's an extra 10 million um, than it is now. Because right now we're talking about 25 million, which is pretty much what we spent for him two years ago. And that, um, and if, if he does have, let's say, between now and the end of the season, he gets uh, three another three goals and three assists, let's say. That's not even that much. But let's say he does that his value probably rises another 10 million. You know what I mean? That's the truth because he's young. He's, um, he's still got um, a lot of scope to grow and he's got, uh, he's got potential. So maybe, you know, 30, 35 million wouldn't even be that outrageous for him in, in, in six months' time. So I would keep him on. I wouldn't sell him. He provides another option and um, we need the depth. And all of a sudden, if we, get, if we keep Bergwijn and get Kulusevski, all of a sudden, in the, if we, got, we got Son... Bergvine, Lucas, Kulusevski, and Kane. And all of a sudden, the options look a bit deeper than they did um, before the window started, even though we're getting rid of Hill. 
because mm. I think Kuliszewski is much more of a good option than Hill. To, to, to like, I I didn't really like with Hill in the team. I just didn't. I didn't even think of him as like. Like, yeah, he was there, but I didn't consider him like an option Conte can rely on. But Kulusevsky, I do. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's absolutely spot on. So I think you have to you have to bring one in if you're, if you're considering selling Bergvine. But in my opinion, I would keep Bergvine um, along with Kulusevsky. Ship Hill out on loan uh, to give him some, you know, um, some first team football week in, week out. And I think our attacking options are actually looking quite strong. <laughs>